in our previous episodes. We went out and discovered ways that nuclear energy is being peacefully applied in various sectors locally. From medicine, food and feed production, to industrial application. What we do is we do calibration for medical equipment. That is equipment that is used to measure radiation. Nuclear energy is not only gaining traction in the country, but also fast transforming lives. Alongside the aforementioned applications, developed countries such as the United States of America, France, China and Japan have gone a step further to adopt the nuclear power program so as to cater for the high demand for electricity. Kenya too has not only shown signs to follow in the footsteps of these countries but also unveiled a nuclear power roadmap that culminates with the commissioning of its first ever nuclear power plant by 2037. With all eyes set on its implementation, the realization of the crucial phase is pegged on government investment, sufficient resources, goodwill from the citizenry, and most importantly, a green light from the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is because countries seeking to go the nuclear way globally are required to work hand in hand with the IAEA and just before advancing to any phase, the IAEA approval is mandatory. This saw an integrated nuclear infrastructure review in air mission conducted this year in Kenya by a team of IAEA experts where the nuclear energy watchdog sought to find out whether the country meets the nuclear infrastructure threshold. Five years since the first air mission, is the country still on the right track? During this mission, the experts only reviewed progress made to implement the 2015 recommendations and suggestions based on the action plan progress report that was submitted by Kenya. The follow-up mission does not review the status of the overall nuclear power program and no provide additional recommendations or suggestions. The report roughly indicates that Kenya made progress in 13 recommendations out of 15 and in 6 suggestions out of 8 from the 2015 review mission, competing respectively 10 recommendations and 4 suggestions. Let me highlight some of the areas where progress has been made. The national nuclear law, the creation of the regulatory body, the assessment of the legal framework, the identification of laws needing review, the development of policies and strategy, the coordination with stakeholders, the site selection. The follow-up opinion team also concluded that further work was needed in areas such as assessment of emergency preparedness, identification of senior managers for the regulator, development of a national nuclear leadership program and assessment of suitability of wild waste management options. We encourage, as the agency, all countries that cause follow-up in a mission to make the final report public. I am pleased that Kenya has verbally expressed its intention to do this and we look forward to receiving an official confirmation in Rome. The IEA can offer targeted technical assistance in key areas, but of course, the major responsibility of moving forward is yours. Well, we look forward to our future meeting in Vienna to coordinate your integrated, integrated work plan for all IEA assistance related to your nuclear power program. We note that nuclear power is a complex undertaking that will require effective interagency cooperation and we encourage Kenya to use the integrated work plan to optimize agency support.
It is a commitment that has placed top nuclear officials on the front line in spearheading the nuclear power program, a program that will ultimately put the country in a rather exclusive club in the nuclear world. Since the first Indian mission, my work has been done as seen during the assessment this week. This year also marks the 10th anniversary since the Fukushima Diashi accident and the need for further strengthening the safety has never been more paramount. This has been projected strongly during this week's proceeding, and our commitment to high safety standards shall be pursued and enforced. Kenya will endeavor to adhere to principles that will ensure the three S's safety, security, and safeguards are upheld. Ladies and gentlemen, why? The regulatory frameworks vary across industrial sectors and countries. They all share a common goal to ensure that a particular technology can benefit society while the risks of using that technology are identified, prevented, and mitigation methods instituted. The government is committed to the nuclear power program and the establishment of a regulatory body is a big step in ensuring it is done in a safe environment. We are also committed to ensuring public trust and therefore stakeholder, stakeholder engagement and public participation shall remain a constant activity in the implementation of the program. With everyone watching, what next for NUPEA having turned a page in the nuclear power program? NUPEA will enhance nat uh, national coordination and competence through particip participation in a detailed and a comprehensive approach with all stakeholders and institutions as we work towards closing the few gaps identified during this follow-up mission. Ladies and gentlemen, the NA follow-up mission has given a big impetus to the nuclear power program for the country and therefore sets a new phase in the milestone approach. The next steps call for greater efforts by, the, by all stakeholders in ensuring that Kenya becomes an only customer and ready to invite the, the beach for the first nuclear power plant. As the country, as the country progresses in implementing the phase one activities, phase two activities that will subsequently lead to the attainment of the milestone two, the country will have the infrastructure for contracting, financing, and construction of the first nuclear power plant. We will be keen to ensure that the necessary level of technical and institutional competence will have been achieved. NUPEA will continue to work closely with the regulator, the Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority, and other relevant institutions to ensure that the necessary level of regulatory framework will be in place to the required level in order to, ful to fulfill authorization and inspection requirements. The government will identify the own operator in due course. This organization will, take, will play a key role in the construction and operations of the nuclear power plants and will be required to develop, the, develop and acquire the capacity to safely operate the plant by the end of phase three. Upon its full attainment of milestone one, the country will commence implementation of requirements and actions for phase two. Capacity will be developed towards becoming a knowledge customer and readiness to invite this for the first nuclear power plant at the end of the second phase. I know electricity is very important and without reliable, affordable electricity, economic development is actually almost impossible. So when we, when we know there are some other sources of electricity like nuclear, which are very useful, then it's important that we take the first step as early as possible and uh, embark on it. Having set sights in going the full distance, questions on whether nuclear energy is worth the struggle have been rife. On our Did You Know segment, we seek to address the elephant in the room.
Did you know nuclear energy is not affected by price fluctuations like most energy sources? Unlike these sources, nuclear power is independent in terms of economic value since it does not rely on external sources whose prices fluctuate. Now you know. In our My View segment, this essay by one of the award-winning pupils advances the nuclear discussion from just electricity. Take a look. Hi, my name is Cynthia Nabwiri. I am a pupil at St. Mary's Nambale Primary School in Busia County and a special category winner for primary school level in 2020 nuclear AC contest. The focus of my AC was on the impact of nuclear exploration on other sectors other than just electricity. These include health where nuclear medicine is used in the imaging of internal organs and thus the diagnosis of certain illness. Radioisotopes and radioactive materials can also be used in clinical testing of drugs before they are approved and improving automobiles, sterilizing medical equipment and killing germs that cause diseases. Switching gears to the IAEA in action segment, in this episode we offer an extra video in back to back fashion. Have a look. Oceans. They cover 71% of the planet's surface, host the majority of its biodiversity, and produce more than half of its oxygen. A healthy ocean is vital for a healthy planet. But the impacts of human activities are causing widespread ocean changes. These threaten ocean life and the livelihoods of more than a billion people. Nuclear applications are helping us understand and mitigate these major environmental challenges, especially ocean acidification and pollution. Greenhouse gas emissions are increasing the acidity of our oceans and corroding fragile marine life. To better understand and measure these impacts, scientists are using the calcium-45 radioactive tracer technique. They set up experimental aquaria with seawater at different pH levels and add calcium-45 as a tracer to measure the difference in the growth of corals and shellfish. Gathering this data is vital to protecting the health of coral reefs, which are so critical to marine ecosystems and coastal communities. Today, people are facing dangerous levels of contaminants in their seafood. From heavy metals, pesticides, microplastics and more. Using techniques based on mass spectrometry, scientists are able to identify the level and source of pollutants in seafood. When analyzing a sample, they remove all its organic matter, leaving only the contaminants behind and then use specialized analytical instruments to determine contaminants present in the sample. Having this data helps coastal countries make appropriate management decisions to regulate pollution. These nuclear and nuclear-derived techniques provide a unique window into understanding the processes behind ocean change, an understanding that can help us secure a healthy ocean for the future. Waste is an unavoidable consequence of everyday life. In terms of volume, radioactive waste is a very small portion of all waste. It's the byproduct of millions of medical procedures each year, industrial and agricultural applications that use radiation, and nuclear reactors that generate around 10% of global electricity. Radioactive waste requires careful management to protect people and the environment from radiation now and in the future. Radioactive waste is first characterized to determine its physical and chemical properties, as well as its radioactivity. It's then processed, which may include sorting, decontamination, and steps to reduce volume. 
The waste is classified based on its long-term management objectives and put into a safe condition for interim storage and, ultimately, disposal. Very low-level waste and low-level waste contain small amounts of radioactive substances. It includes waste generated by industries and hospitals or items such as clothes used in nuclear facilities. This waste requires minimal isolation and is suitable for disposal in near-surface facilities. Intermediate-level waste is more radioactive and typically comprises materials from decommissioned reactors and research laboratories. It requires more containment and isolation. High-level waste presents the greatest hazard. It accounts for a minute portion of the total volume of all radioactive waste and includes waste from nuclear power plants. High-level waste requires greater containment and its disposal is planned in engineered facilities several hundred meters underground. In the meantime, it is safely stored in purpose-built facilities. The IAEA provides support to countries in the safe management of all radioactive waste. On that back-to-back -back fashion, it is time to call it a wrap on this episode and consequently on this nuclear series. I trust that the episode and the entire series has been worth your valuable time. Remember, the nuclear conversation goes beyond this episode and extends to our various social media handles, that is TV47 Kenya, on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Alternatively, at Nuclear Kenya on Twitter and Nuclear Kenya on Facebook is the place to go for anything nuclear. This episode has been powered by the Nuclear Power and Energy Agency. Goodbye for now.